It's a beautiful night for baseball in Atlanta, and it's a special night for the fans who have gathered for the Braves and Phillies weekend set. It's zombie night, and it is a big series here. The Braves and Phillies separated by one game for fourth place in the Eastern Division race. Nobody wants the number one pick. Atlanta's got to play better baseball to avoid that fate here in the final stages of 2015. That was a very scary shot. Yeah, Chip and Joe, welcome Don back to Sutton. the ballpark. I didn't realize that was Don out there. Until Never seen him out of the radio booth looking anything like that. Anyway, big game tonight for the Braves and the fight in Phillies. Joe, in a season where not much has gone right offensively for Atlanta, one man has answered the question as to why the Braves went out and signed him. That's Nick Marcakis. He's had a spectacular first season this year in the National League. And he's been an Iron Man. He's only missed three games, and, and I know for a fact that Nick's not 100% right now. He's got a lot of nagging injuries. But he's in there every night, and boy, has he been a model of consistency, hitting right at 300 for almost the whole season. The numbers tell, don't lie. I mean, yeah, he hasn't hit a lot of home runs, but everything else, outstanding. Leads the club in all these categories. Average on base hits, runs scored, and second in the National League with 50 multi-hit games. So consistent all year long. That's what you're looking for from a guy when you when you sign him and you hope that he can live up to the numbers he's had in the past. Nick Markakis has. Tip of the cap for a great year for Nick Markakis and still a couple of weeks to go for the Braves. It's game one. Williams Perez for Atlanta. Adam Morgan goes for the Phillies. He's a hometown kid. We'll see if the Braves can beat him for a third time this year when we come back next. Look at the fight in Phils, who enter play tonight at 56 and 91 on the year. Pete McCannon's their interim manager. Here's his academy sports lineup. A lot of notable names are missing. Most importantly, Ryan Howard, the Braves killer, not in there tonight. Darren Ruff will play first base. As Joe mentioned, Cesar Hernandez out with a broken thumb. He is finished for the season. He's one of a couple of Phillies that have really hit the Braves hard. Hopefully none of them will hit Williams Perez hard tonight. Perez will try to earn victory number six this season tonight. Williams is 24 years old, 6'1", 230, making his 18th start of the year. 
Here's what has really hurt Williams all year long. First time through the order, huge numbers. Second and third time, not so bad at all. It's just getting off to a good start. His starting blocks have been kind of dead for him. And that leads us to four keys to pitching success tonight. Number one, early damage. He's got to avoid that tonight. A 373 average against him in his first 31 pitches on average for the year. A 307 average against him in the first inning for the year. And Molly Brown, remember her? Unsinkable. Yeah, yeah. He's got to be sinkable. Oh, right. He's yeah. got to. He's got to have that sinker working tonight. So, don't even think about Molly Brown. I just want to put that thought in your head. <laughs> you did it. Let's see what Perez can do tonight against the Phillies and Freddie Galvis, who leads off. Galvis, 265 for the year. And we are underway. Strike one. Eighty degrees. At first pitch in Atlanta. And a swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Braves and Phillies season series tied at eight games apiece. Phillies though have won five of the last eight meetings. And a line shot to short. That's handled by Andrews and Simmons. And Perez takes care of Galvis for the first down of the game. One up, one down for Aaron Altair. Got our first look at Altair up in Philadelphia. Good looking young player. Getting a chance to impress for the Phillies in September. 19 hits in the big leagues, 12 of them for extra bases so far, including three triples. And a strike. They had Altair in right field when we were last in Philly, but tonight Bogusevich gets the call. In right field, so Altair moves to left. But a big rangy guy. He looked good in Philadelphia. So does Williams here tonight so far. Little dribbler toward first. Freeman will take it to the bag, and there's his first ground ball out tonight. Two up, two down. And a double Herrera, the Phillies center fielder, is in the box. Pete McCannon took over for Ryan Sandberg, who stepped down earlier this year. That's a difficult spot, but a spot that McCannon has been in before several times. He has been an interim manager. And you know what, Joe? A lot of folks around the Philly ball club thinks think that he's done a good enough job to maybe be asked to be the permanent manager. I think he's earned that that uh, opportunity for next season because they've played and their record indicates a lot better since he took over. I think they were one of the best teams in baseball coming out of the all star break. They had that very impressive run. But have cooled considerably since. Man, that's a thankless job, isn't it? You have a, a bad season. Your manager either is fired or resigns. And you've got to somehow keep your team together the rest of the season. And Pete McCannon's done that. Baseball lifer and a, a good guy. Broken bat, and that's up the middle. Herrera continues his impressive rookie season with a two out broken bat single through the box. He did not have a very good homestand. He only hit 212 on the homestand. On a 250 average against the Braves this year with three home runs. And broke his bat on a good pitch, good sinker. And he spoiled it. Here's Darren Ruff. Eight homers, 29 RBIs for Ruff, batting 239 for the year. Guessing Joe the Phillies have a very good idea of what Ryan Howard can and cannot do at this stage in his career. So using these games to see what Darren Ruff can do. Yeah, I think it's a good plan. I thought the I thought originally the plan was for Howard to sit against lefties, but he is sitting tonight in large part. As Matt Diaz pointed out on Braves Live, he's hot. He's hit three homers in his last 11 games since getting an opportunity to play more. One ball, no strikes. And that's into the knees. And 
The Phillies need runs. They were swept by Washington, scored nine runs in their series with the Nats, and a ton of strikeouts. What was it, 42? 42 strikeouts for the Phillies, including a 14 strikeout game by Steven Strasburg, if memory serves. Two balls and a strike. Williams last start against the Mets that had followed that win at Philadelphia. He went six innings against the Mets gave up three runs three walks and got a no decision Braves lost that game six to four. Fouled at the plate. Good and movement on that pitch. No three and two that was biting in on his hands and. All he could do is foul it off his foot. Nick Swisher can relate to that boy. He nailed himself last night with a foul ball and still suffering from it today. So Herrera will be off with the pitch. There he goes and it's fouled straight back. Part of the growing process for this young Braves pitching staff has been in situations like this. Two quick outs in an inning, then hits and walks, extending innings, deepening pitch counts, lengthening the frames. Braves bullpen was used a lot in that series against Toronto. Be nice to see Perez go deep in the game tonight. Again, a 3 2 pitch and another foul ball. Rough is the guy that. The Phillies were just drooling over back in 2012 at Reading in double A. He hit 317 with 32 doubles, 38 home runs, and 104 RBIs. And only struck out 102 times in almost 500 at bats, which was impressive. But it just hasn't translated to the big leagues like they would like, and partially because he doesn't get to play a lot. Because of Howard. Another 3 2 and another foul ball. Well, when you have a team like the Phillies and you have a team like the Braves, there is an entire laundry list of things that need to be addressed between now and the start of opening day 2016. I'm guessing Ryan Howard's situation has to be one of them for Philadelphia. He's got another year on his contract and a big option. And a big buyout too. 3-2 pitch. Oh, another foul ball. Rough not going quietly in this first inning. That's not the type of save you usually see from a slugger. And making Williams work a little extra. Pitch number 10. And that one's line foul. It almost picked off Pat Holberg, the first base umpire. It was almost, oh, baby. Shook out. Now Christian Bethancourt's out to talk to Perez. Trying to find out something that Ruff can't hit. As Chip said, they got swept by Nats. They've lost three in a row, six out of eight. The Phillies have, and in those eight games, they've only hit 188 as a team. Wow, 
Great at bat. And Perez is throwing him everything he's got. Rough out of Omaha and Creighton University. Six three two fifty. Yeah, he's every bit of that, isn't he? Uh huh. Big dude. So here in the first inning, he's already had the at bat of the series. Williams Perez has thrown twenty pitches. And 13 of them have come to or about to come to Darren Ruff. Try that little soft slow curve ball where he, he takes his index finger off of it and drop it in there. That was tipped and caught by Bethancourt. So a 13 pitch at bat strikes out Darren Ruff. The Philly Strand Herrera, the Braves are coming up. The bottom of the first. Braves go to work against young left-hander Adam Morgan. And who better to get things started than a red hot Nick Marcakis? 50 multi-hit games so far this year. He leads off our Academy Sports and Outdoors lineup. Hector Oliveira's first big league homer came against the Phillies. Perhaps number two is in the offing tonight against the young Philly Southpaw. Well, he's a local guy out of Marietta and Kell High School, 25 years old, 6'1, 195. We talk so much about pitchers. Who have had trouble in the first inning. This guy's not one of them. Two starts this year, first two starts of his career against Atlanta, no wins, but a decent ERA. Five walks, six strikeouts in 12 innings. And that's a lot of walks for him by comparison to the rest of his year. And you're right about the first inning. Two runs allowed by Morgan in the first inning this year. Opponents hitting only 160 in the first frame. He's got a tough test. Nick Markakis with his 168 hits leads things off for the Braves. And that's sky foul. Even count. 88 to 92 on the fastball from Morgan. Slider change up. <laughs> Term I heard describing Morgan. A poor man's Cliff Lee. And there are times where he tries to pitch like Cliff Lee, even his delivery. Little bloop beyond the third base bag is going to drop for a leadoff hit. Nick is living right. Shakes out that left hand. Might have found a few bumblebees, but a good start for the Braves in the bottom of the inning. Well, as you watch this replay, let's just say this is not something you practice. 
you could stand there all day and not be able to do what he just did. A bloop and a butte. So 169 hits for Marcakis now. That's good for third in the National League. A.J. Pollock is second to D. Gordon of the Marlins, who has 184. So here's Daniel Castro hitting 300. He's knocked in three runs. And a guy that can fill that hole on the right side of the infield where Marquecas stands from first. Foul back. I was talking to Carlos Tosca about him earlier today by the batting cage, and Carlos was saying a lot of nice things about Daniel and what a good player he has is and has become. Take a look at our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot. 12 home games this year. Great numbers. Carlos paid him the ultimate compliment. He said he's a baseball player. And he's athletic. Little pop into shallow left. And that's going to be playable for Altair, who gets there with those daddy long legs. And that takes care of Castro. One on, one out. Morgan, a third round pick four years ago out of Alabama, and as Joe mentioned, Kell High School. When Jerome Williams got hurt, he was somewhat of an un unlikely candidate to get summoned to the major leagues. Here's the pitch for Freddie Freeman. And he jumps on it, drives it toward right. Bogusevic is there and makes the catch. You don't often see a young man get called up from the minor leagues, Joe, with an 0-6 record at AAA. No, you don't. That never used to happen. But he's trying to make the best of his opportunity, too. Trying to even his record tonight at 6-6. Six and six. Third round pick four years ago. His last two have been pretty rough. Last two starts, both losses, 11 and a third innings. 15 hits and 10 runs, so maybe the Braves can make it 0 and 3 against Atlanta. Fly ball center, Herrera back, still going back onto the warning track, high off the fence. Bogusevic backs it up. Here comes Marcakis around. He's going to score on a line drive double off the wall by Adonis Garcia. He must have hurt himself. I think he hurt himself when they almost picked him off when Ruff snuck in behind him. This is where we've seen him drive the ball hard all season long, almost hit it out of the ballpark. And then Darren Ruff came running in behind him. And I think they got him. So it's an RBI double. The question is, was Garcia nabbed on the return throw from Bogusevic? The Phillies are going to challenge the safe call at second base. Safe or out? Heads up play by Ruff. And he is out. There's the sign from Jim Joyce. So that's the third out of the inning. The run does score, and Atlanta leads 1 0.
Braves won Phillies nothing as we get sent for inning number two on zombie night tonight at Turner Field. The Mark, out call was made very quickly at second base, but there's still some work to be done from replay central in New York. Yeah, to make sure that Marquecas scored before the out was applied, but Ruff went sneaking in there behind him and got him. So very clearly you saw in the replay the third out came well after Marquecas touched the plate, so it's the third first inning run allowed by Adam Morgan and an early lead for Williams Perez. Braves fans, are you on the A-list? Become a 2016 A-list member tonight and receive exclusive benefits customized to meet your unique needs. SunTrust Park seating priority is still being given to current A-list members. So become a member today to get closer to securing your seats for SunTrust Park in 2017. Visit Braves.com slash A-list and join today. And apparently Garcia is not able to continue. He'll be taken out for Michael Bourne. It was the lunge that got him. Kind of a sneak attack there from Ruff, too. That's too bad. That was a great swing he put on the ball. It's really a rough way to end your night. Andres Blanco will. Go to work for the Phillies here in the second inning. No, it's Andres Blanco, Ashy, and Rupp against Williams Perez. One nothing. Atlanta has a first inning lead, and that's outside. One ball, no strikes. Blanco's done good work for the Phillies. Five homers, 19 RBIs. Hasn't seen a lot of playing time against the Braves, but when he's played, he's hit. He's got five hits in eight games. That's laced out of play foul two and two. Blanco is along with Carlos Ruiz, the two guys that kind of police the Latin players on this team. I was told about a story where he's always trying to make sure everybody's in the game in the dugout. There was a night where Michael Franco was not playing and he had on some turf shoes or the like in the dugout and got to be late in the ball game where he might pinch hit or going for defense and Blanco got him up had his hand up on his jersey held his jersey and walked him in the clubhouse ground ball to second and a close play good hustle ran down the line hard for the first out but essentially it told him you know you got to be ready you might get called on at any time and then made a point of walking him to the clubhouse to get his shoes on. I'm guessing that wasn't a silent walk. Yeah. I, I probably not, right? Yeah, not the first rodeo for Andres Blanco. First big league action came in 2004 with the Royals. Got 25 big league games with the Phillies last year. Here's Cody Ashy. She has five hits in 46 at bats against the Braves this year. Ping pong season for him. He began the year at third base. Michael Franco got called up. Ashy went down to the minor leagues to learn how to play left. Then Franco got hurt. Ashy's back at third base. This is the line of danger for Williams Perez first 30 pitches once he gets past that and weathers that things get a whole lot better. Two 
Swing and a miss. Sashi is down on strikes. Second strikeout for Williams Perez. And Cameron Rupp is the hitter. Ashy's now five for 47 against Atlanta this year. There's that curveball. Here's big Cameron Rupp. Riding a three game hitting streak. And it's fell off Bethancourt. Strike one. Every hitter that comes up tonight has some special artwork for their bio photo on the big scoreboard here in Atlanta. Strike two. These last two starts plus an inning and a half. There's just been a lot more confidence from Williams Perez on the mound working faster. Making pitches with conviction. That's it hard toward right. Marquecas isn't going to get that. It is a home run for Cameron Ruff the other way. That pitch, however, was convicted. Yes. Ninth homer for Rupp. His second home run of the year against the Braves, and we're tied now in the second inning, one apiece. And once again, two quick outs. Trouble come. Comes with two outs. Well, really jumped off his bat the other way. He looked like as surprised as we were about him going the other way. So Williams Perez surrenders his 12th homer, only the fourth to a right hand hitter. And the runs are even, the hits are even. And Brian Bogusevic is up, his first. At bat as a Philly was a home run against the Braves and another meeting with Christian Bethancourt. Two balls, no strikes. That home run for Bogusevic was his first home run in the major league since 2013. And it's a high hopper out towards second. Castro's got it. And that is the inning. Phillies tied the game on a Cameron Rupp home run. Home second coming up.
we are tied at one apiece. Maven Simmons and Oliveira are coming up. I want to send out a big shout out to a big Braves friend and a friend of ours, Jack Kennedy, who's been having some health issues of late. Jack's apparently up and about and feeling better. No, he's enjoying the ball game tonight. Never misses a Braves game. And Jack wanted us to remind everybody about the Quiet Heroes event, which will be chaired by Chris Glavin, Tom's lovely wife. The childhood cancer benefit here in downtown Atlanta begins at 11 o'clock at the Intercontinental Hotel in Buckhead. Silent auction, great event, great charity, and Tom and Chris do such great work. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention that to you. So yeah, we appreciate all they do. And it's a lot. So hope you can make a day of it with them early and join us late tomorrow for game two of the series at Turner Field. Cameron Maben takes high, one ball, no strikes. Good to have Cameron back in the lineup. Had a moderate dry spell. He was 0 for 12 for a fifth inning single here last night. And this was popped up. And short Galvis says he's got it. Plenty of room. And there's out number one. You look at the Braves and Phillies records. They're only a game apart in the standings. The Phillies are 4 and 11 in September. The Braves are 3 and 13 in September. You look at the run differentials this year with these two ball clubs. It's it's alarmingly high for both teams. They have been outscored with reckless abandon so far this season, and that's obviously a product of the pitching we talked about in our open. Young staff. In Philadelphia, very young staff here in Atlanta. They're learning on the job. There's that differential you're talking about. It is extremely high. By contrast, the Toronto Blue Jays have outscored their opponents by 210 runs. They're plus 210. Braves from minus 196. That's why they're in first place. Whew. And that's where both Braves and Phillies hope to go sooner rather than later. A direct shot into Cameron Rupp. Got a piece of him too. You hit a home run, people start taking shots at you. Well, if that, you're, when you're that big, you can't get out of the way, can you? Well, I just think when he took that shot to the mask, if ever there's a catcher's neck that can take it and absorb it, it's his. Swing and a miss. Don't see that too often from Anderson Simmons, although they are starting to pile up at this time of year for him. And a three strikeout game the other night against the Jays. Straight change and a real slow one. Hector Oliveira, first big league homer September 7th in Philadelphia. One ball, no strikes. Another one. Good one. Right off the end of the bat. Pitcher covers. And an easy one, two, three, second inning for Morgan. He'll take matters into his own hands as we head to the third.
first meet in game one. Well, there is the tale of the tape. The Rockies a full five games back of the Braves, six ahead of the Phillies in terms of the worst record in baseball. The Reds have been sinking like a rock. The Brewers have actually played a little better in recent days and the team you do not see on there that was down there are the Miami Marlins. They have really gone to the whip here over the last week to 10 days and they're playing excellent baseball. Marlins have won five straight series believe it or not. And that's another one of the clubs the Braves have to face after the Phillies. The home stretch for Atlanta is not going to be easy at all. The Braves have to go to New York and Miami, then home to Washington and the St. Louis Cardinals, and nothing's been decided playoff wise yet. So one of those clubs figure to call off the dogs. The Braves will have to be at their best to have a fighting chance. Adam Morgan takes a strike of the outer edge. Another hot team is the Cubs. They won their fourth straight today and beat the St. Louis Cardinals, and Starlin Castro had a huge day. Two homers, five RBIs. Fly ball toward left. Bourne back and gets there. And there's out number one. Now the Cubs are trying to catch the Pirates. They're now a game and a half behind Pittsburgh for home field advantage in the one game wild card game. And advantage Chicago in that the Pirates lost Jung Ho Gong yesterday to that horrific knee injury. And now they begin a 10 game Western road trip in L.A. First two pitchers they face are Granke and Kershaw. So Perez gets the first out here in the third inning. Freddie Galvis hits for a second time. He lined out to short to start the game. He hits it near to center. Maven backtracks. And that ball carries out to the warning track. Well, he just flicked his wrists, it looked like. Drove that ball about 380 feet to left. That's what surprised me about Garcia's ball in the first inning. I thought it might have a chance to get over Herrera's head, but I didn't think it would hit high on the wall. A little bit of breeze out there tonight. Down and away, he had to supply all the power. Here's Altair and a belt high strike on one. Phillies will be an interesting team in the offseason. We mentioned a couple of decisions they have to make. But they have a gigantic new TV contract that's going to kick in next season. They will have the opportunity to delve as deeply into free agency as they want. And we know how passionate that fan base is. You give them something to cheer about, fans in Philly will show up. Absolutely they will. And with all that money, with some good choices and selections, if they want to go through free agency, they could bounce back next year quickly. They're very happy with their prospect haul they got in the Cole Hamels trade. Very happy. They've got some really good young hitters and pitchers in that deal back with Texas. They need starting pitching as Perez gets the Phillies in order with only eight pitches. He's got three strikeouts. He's due second in the home third, tied at one.
I want to tell you something. Doctoring the baseball came about when the comparison was made for surgeons doing work on the baseball. That would refer to pitchers. It was outlawed in 1920. So, hey, what's up with all the rosin on the back of Adam Morgan's hat and even on the side? Here's the rule. You can't directly put anything on the baseball. That would include rosin. But you can put it on your hat or other part of your body, touch it, and then go to the baseball. Not saying I made the rules. But, hey, there's a couple weird ones. Adam Morgan using it to his advantage tonight. Well, he's got it all over the back of his hat, especially. That's a good pickup there, Paul. Much like Cliff Lee, if I remember, yeah, his cap was that's right. Coated in rosin like Morgan's is. Remember, we had the situation with Will Smith earlier this year, the Milwaukee Brewers relief pitcher that had pine tar all over his right arm, and it was so obvious. Braves weren't going to say anything about it until they saw him go to the pine tar. And then he was. Checked and then kicked out of the game. I think it was Jim Joyce's crew that was here. I may be wrong about that. And the I guess unwritten rule yes, is I think you're right. It was the unwritten rule is as long as you're not really really obvious about it. Teams are willing to with what look the other way with with the pine tar. Oh heck no. <laughs> If they even sense that you're using pine tar, they're not they're gonna call you on it. Well they're gonna call you on it, but you gotta prove he's got it. My point is Freddie Gonzalez said in the state of game with Milwaukee until he went and got uh -huh. it, that's when they said, okay, enough's enough. They knew he had it. Line drive left and over the head of Altair. Bethan Court's on his way to second. And he's there with a leadoff double, hard hit pitch. And his eighth two banger of the year. Let's see oh, if he smoked that. Perez can get him to third. High fastball, and he just tomahawked it. Yeah, you're you're right in this sense, Chip. There, a lot of guys do it. It's just a matter of are they going to get caught? It's, right. It's not an unwritten rule that it's okay until you make it obvious, but. Most of the guys that are doing it are really good at hiding it is what I guess, I guess I'm saying Gaylord Perry everybody knew Gaylord had right. it somewhere but they couldn't find it right and that's what I that's what I mean when you when you see a relief pitcher come out and he looks like he has two mascara stripes on his arm yeah that's that's a little too obvious to let slide especially when he went to it it was like glue stick uh oh, uh -oh. Bethancourt is going to be picked off that can't happen Braves have had two base running mistakes in this game. Garcia, the first one, Bethancourt wandered too far off the bag, and he's an easy out. Nice quick snap throw by Rupp. Good swing, bad base running. Strike one to Perez, base is empty. And out of play. Two six five, the pickoff of Bethencourt. And that pitch missed to Perez, one and two your count. There's strike three, second strikeout for Morgan. Two away. What really hurts about that play is Christian's already in scoring position. No matter what Perez do does, you've got your hottest hitter coming up behind the pitcher, the chance to go in front. Here's the here's the thing that I would complain about with respect to what Morgan's doing. You can go to your mouth now while standing on the mound, right? But you've got to wipe. And most of the time, guys will go to their mouth and they wipe their pant leg. He's going immediately to his hat, which is where the rosin is. So he goes to the mouth, goes to the hat. Now moisture makes rosin tackier. So that is a definite advantage for him if that's where he always goes to wipe. So could Jim Joyce say, hey son, go get a new hat? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know because it is rosin. He might be able to say, Need you to wipe somewhere else. There you go. Fly ball left. Altair's got it. 
And the Braves ran themselves out of a chance to score in inning number three. One one ball game. A couple of mistakes on the base paths have cost the Braves a chance to take a lead. We'll see if Perez can pitch around that. A couple of weeks left in regular season play. Always fun to talk about award winners or the potential award winners in both leagues. The National League Rookie of the Year could be a very hotly contested race. Joe, here are your candidates or your top four, so to speak, as we have uh, the Phillies in town tonight. Yeah, Chuck Peterson was going to walk off and leave everybody early in the year, but he went downhill on a slippery slope. Chris Bryant got called up, took over all that attention. He has not let up. 24 and 93 with a 274 average of playing third base for the Cubs. I think he is the leader in the clubhouse by a good margin. And I love Matt Duffy. I think he's had a great year for the Giants and leads all the rookies in hits. But I think he's going to be a runner up in that deal. Yeah, I can't argue with any of those choices. Bryant has the advantage of playing in Chicago. Big market and Wrigley Field and there big crowds. It's foul ball. And Herrera back to the plate down a strike going one your count. Good try by Christian there to try to get that before it went foul because he had time to get him. And. Freddie's out talking to Chad Fairchild Greg Gibson. Wasn't Greg's call. Unless he was just letting Freddie know that he's backing up what Fairchild called. It was fair momentarily. But Chad was right there to make the call. So a strike for Herrera, who, as you know, is very deliberate as he takes his stance. Hughes one foul back out of play 0 2. Yeah, it's caused some uh, consternation with some teams that are in this division. Not the Braves, but a couple of other teams where he's actually gotten plunked because of all the time he takes and the arm up asking the umpire to wait until he's ready. As a rookie, that's that's a lot. That happened the other day in the American League. Was it uh, Weaver against Seattle? I think it was Kyle Seeger. Uh huh. Right. Was asking for time and kept stepping out. Weaver got so mad he just hit him and got thrown out of the game. That was a big departure for the Angels. Yeah, that wasn't very smart. Right. One ball, two strikes for a double Herrera, and that's flipped out of play. Still one and two.
Was that odd stance? It looks like he's finally ripped out the back of his pants there, Chip. You were talking about in Philadelphia about him pulling his pants down over his his spike and his heel. Ripped him out. So I don't know what'll happen now if those things happen to hike up to the top of his shoes. Don't want to have floods, man. That's why well, he may not be able to play. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. And out of play. This kid's strong. And he can run. They're having to bat him third because they don't have anybody else right now. 14 stolen bases. He's been caught eight times. And they literally stole him out of the Texas organization with a rule five draft. No swing two balls two strikes. So in what's been a disappointing season for the Phillies. This is obviously a positive development for them. They found an everyday player who can hit flirting with a 300 average. Herrera hitting 297. Here we are again with a foul ball fest. Perez can't polish him off. Here are the ranks for Herrera among National League rookies. Get an impressive resume. Absolutely, he does. Second in doubles, second in steals. And he just spoiled it, a good change up from Williams. And he's an infielder by trade, so he's done a good job in center field for them, too. He's made some mistakes like any first year center fielder might make throwing the wrong bases not getting great jumps but he's getting better at that. Five errors in center field. Over the mound, Castro charged, fast runner, scoop and safe. Herrera with an infield hit. Anybody else, Daniel Castro gets him. But Herrera too fast down the line. Two seam fastball. Good pitch by Williams. But a half step even less than that. To beat it out. Herrera now two for two in the game and here's rough. But a 13 pitch at bat in the first inning and struck out on a foul tip. Line foul at third. Strike one. Cost him a bat. They've got rough and rough. Too bad they don't have Randy ready on their coaching staff. There you go. Balls at a strike. Hard to believe four years ago, the Phillies won 102 games. How long ago? 2011. Hmm. They're trying to avoid losing 100 games. This, this would be normally, for both of these organizations, a huge series. Right. I mean, one of the two of them, for the last... 15 to 20 years one of them has won the division just about every year. Snap throw to first almost handcuffed Freddie Freeman. One ball two strikes. When we saw the Phillies week and a half ago or so up at Citizens Bank Park. Ruben Amaro was still their general manager. That's another big 
noteworthy item that's taken place in the past few days. Amaro was told his contract would not be picked up. As Ruff didn't get it, is down swinging. There's the first out of the inning. So that's another item that Andy McPhail has to address. He's got to find a general manager, decide on his field manager, and then go about adding players to their 25-man roster and their farm system. Only three times since 1993 has someone other than the Braves or Phillies won the division. Here's Blanco. And a line drive to left on the first pitch. Herrera stops at second, two on, one out. And Cody Ashey is up. Very different looking Phillies club with Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley now members of the Dodgers. Of course, their glory years they had Jason Worth and they had uh, Shane Victorino running around in the outfield. Big three in rotation. But a big drop off, not only in pitching, but offensively too for the Phillies. Another good pitch from Williams. It got spoiled. Blanco taking it the other way. And that's hard, I'm sure, for the fans in Philadelphia. You love your players. You want to stay loyal to the guys that got your world championship, did so many great things. But it seemed like, Joe, overnight that Phillies team got very, very old and very, very expensive. It really did tie them up financially with the contracts not just of Howard and Utley but those of Cliff Lee and Cole Hamels their offensive ranks this year to date next to last in on base percentage and even in home runs in that ballpark hard to believe oh and two for Ashy Continues to struggle against Braves pitching. He struck out his first time up. And you look at their starting lineup tonight. They do not have a single man in double digits and homers. The Braves, who haven't exactly been the Bronx Bombers, have two players in double digits and homers tonight. Freeman and Cameron Maben. And that just missed low to Ashy. One ball, two strikes. Philadelphia won 73 games last year and lost 89. They finished in last place in the division, 23 games out. They've already lost more this year than they lost last year. But I always thought the, the, the tenure of Ruben Amaro was in some ways a double edged sword. Again, you want to stay loyal to your players. To his credit, he and ownership decided, all right, we've got one championship. Let's see if we can keep this core together and go get another one. It didn't happen. Roy Halladay broke down, forced to retire. Cliff Lee broke down. Ryan Howard blew out his Achilles. Two balls, two strikes. And popped out of Bethancourt's glove. My question to you is two knee surgeries for Chase Utley. Chase Utley. Had the Phillies won a second championship, would they have been in the situation they are now as far as the decision they made with Ruben Amaro? I don't know. I can't answer that. I mean, a lot of those players were already on the ball club when he came along as the new GM. They were already in place. But in recent years, last couple of years, it became more his job to unload those if he could. And he was able to, and I guess it was too little too late. Carlos Ruiz and Ryan Howard, the lone holdovers from the Phillies World Championship team. Carlos hasn't played much at all in the second half. Fly ball, well hit center. Maven going back. He is shy of the track, makes the grab, and Herrera was late getting back to the second base bag, couldn't tag. And the runners are at first and second still now with two outs. 
in his own ballpark he might have had a better feel for whether or not that ball was going out of the ballpark. Ashy hit it well. But as you said he was late reading the fact that Maben had a beat on it. So two are out, two are on. Here's Rupp who homered back in the second inning. And he was a little late. Driven foul and out of play. Cameron Rupp's homer is our Yellowwood Lane bringing the lumber feature. And he took this one the other way. Fastball had a lot of the plate. And he was kind of late on that one, Chip. But strong enough to hit it out. Did he go? No swing. Well, Rupp didn't hit a ton of home runs as a minor league player. He had just 39 of them in 411 games. What really attracted the Phillies to him is he had thrown out 41% of would be base stealers in the minor leagues. And we saw how strong his arm was yeah. when he got Bethencourt. Texas Longhorn lives in Plano, Texas. And laid off. I see this guy and Evan Gaddis go toe to toe in a home run derby. <laughs> I'll take Evan. We know he can hit one one handed. He did that the other day against the Rangers. You see that swing? Mm -hmm. Two and two is pulled foul. And I say that with no disrespect to Cameron Rupp. It's just that Evan Gaddis is hitting. 25 a year and I've seen him in batting practice. Simmons trying to keep the runner close second and that missed low full count. And there have been a couple down there at the bottom of the zone that haven't gone his way. Williams having to work hard 30 pitch inning. Runners go, swing and a miss, sweeping breaking ball, earns him his fifth strikeout, and ends the Phillies' fourth. Castro, Freeman, and Michael Bourne are coming up. We're still tied one apiece.
in our finale against the Toronto Blue Jays. And it's with great trepidation that we offer you tonight's AT&T Universe Trivia Question. The great thing about it is the question will probably change before the end of the night. So, for now, here's the question. Name the last player selected by the Phillies as the number one overall pick in the draft. I don't know the answer to that. That's a smart answer. Daniel Castro puts <laughs> things off as we head to the fourth inning. Because my answer now may not be the answer later when we revisit that question. Correct. It'll save the tenth pick, probably. Yes. I know you're not into Twitter and all that stuff. All Thank I can you. tell you is my my Twitter feed blew up last night at the outrage at the injustice that we were forced to suffer through as Galvis makes a nice play to get Castro. There's out number one. Yeah, don't hit it to that guy. He's made some circus plays against the Braves and others in 2015. That's another positive for Phillies. He's really emerged at shortstop. Here's Freddie Freeman. He popped out to left his first time up. Freddie in a bit of a September swoon. Four hits in his last 25 at bats. Left side popped up. And no play with the shift on. Calvis plays it on a hop. That doesn't count. Strike one. I asked Don Sutton between innings about uh, Morgan's hat and all the rosin on it. Don knows a thing or two about that. And I said, do you, I asked him your question. I said, do you think uh, Jim Joyce would have the right to tell him not to rub his fingers on his hat, thereby right. moisture and rosin? And he said, no, I don't think he could because it's legal. It's rosin. And if he's licking his fingers and rubbing, then he's doing what the rules say. Craig Kimbrell, when he was with the Braves, had a very similar bill of the cap, although his was much darker. He would have dirt and rosin together. And that's where Craig would go when he won a little tackiness for his fingertips. Not rubbing it on his hat now. He's, he's looking and rubbing around his belt. Good pitch. Good spot to go if you want to go away now. Golf down the right field line. Fair ball into the corner. Freddie around first on his way to second. And he's got a one out double. His 25th two base hit of the year, and that snaps an 0 for 11 slide for the Braves' first baseman. I think Morgan was trying to go away. No, that was just change up. Freddie just went out and handed that one. Hands and wrists. Michael Bourne came on for Ardonis Garcia, who was picked off. In the opening inning. No word on if he was taken out of the game because of injury or for the bad base running play. And the first pitch hammered by Bourne to straightaway center. Freeman's thinking about tagging. He's coming over. Herrera's throw is on the money, but an eyelash late. Strong throw. Good hustle by Freddie here. Did you say Garcia taken out of the game for injury? You don't know if his injury or for bad base running? Yeah. Well, if they were going to take him out for bad base running, they wouldn't have let him go out to left field before they sent Michael Bourne in. And then he barely was able to make his way into the so, dugout. So we're going to go with injury. And we'll wait and see what the diagnosis is. We've heard nothing yet. As Maven Batsman at third, two out. And he 
base, singles to center, and the Braves have taken the lead back. That's what Cameron Maven's done all year. He's come through in a big way with men at second and third. And the Braves are back in front here in the fourth inning. 53 RBIs for Cameron now. And that hustle by Freeman to get to third made it easy. Like a high breaking ball that just kind of hung out over the plate. And Maven is 53rd RBI. So it's 2 1 Braves. And Anderson Simmons, the hitter. He struck out swinging in the second. And now Maven is going to be safe at second. They had him picked off, but Maven outran the baseball. You kids at home, if you're playing some fall ball or if you're thinking about next spring, if you get picked off, this is what you do. You keep running. Don't stop. Don't try to get in a run down. Your chances in a run down are real slim. But with Maven's speed, he forced Ruff to make a good throw, which he didn't. And Cameron able to get in there head first. It's a stolen base. It's 22nd. And now Simmons drives one toward left center. Herrera on the run is going to get there. And that will retire the side. Simmons hit it hard. And the Braves pick up a run on two fourth inning hits. Two on Atlanta. Right stuff, low price every day. Joe and Chip with you from Atlanta. Beautiful night for baseball. Enthusiastic crowd here for game one of the series with the Phillies. Zombie night, fireworks afterward. And it should be a great weekend for baseball here at Turner Field. Hope you'll make your plans to join us. Brian Bogusevic will lead things off for the Fightins as we move to the fifth. Williams Perez back in front now. He's had to work hard. 76 pitches through four innings. Williams started the season for the Braves. It was a relief outing against the Nationals. He got bombarded in his first big league action. And the Braves put him in rotation and he took off. He was yeah. very impressive. And one can only wonder what might have been for Perez until that batted ball knocked him to the DL in Pittsburgh. Yeah, he was on quite a roll going into that game. A 
to his credit, he tried to stay in the game and pitch. It was just too painful. Pitched a big game against the Phillies September 7th. Got the Braves to snap their 12 game overall losing streak. And he's looking a little more like the Williams Perez pre injury as that one right back up the middle for Bogusevic leads off the inning. And Morgan will have a chance to bunt. Change up. That was up and reachable. Fortunately, it missed Williams on the way by. Taken high. Phillies have to be very, very pleased with what Morgan has given them, both at the minor league level and major league level. Throw out the 0 and 6 at AAA. He didn't pitch at all last year. He's coming back from shoulder surgery. And for him to be this effective for a Phillies team that's 56 and 91 is pretty impressive work. And tonight, pitching in his hometown, he's done a, a nice job, although trailing 2 to 1. Yeah, all all of the reports I hear on him are that they like him a lot. Think that he will factor into their rotation thoughts for next year. Runner goes, and that's bunted beautifully in front of the plate. No chance for Bethencourt to throw to second. There's the sacrifice for Morgan. Bogusevic at second base, representing the tying run, and we're headed to the top of the order. Well, that's a weird way. It worked out for him, but. You don't steal and bunt at the same time. So I'm going to guess that Bogan Bogusevich got lucky and was a was able to be protected by the pitcher. So now Larry Boa is talking to Morgan. So now I'm guessing Morgan's the guy that missed it. Again, it worked out though. Galvis a strike. Nothing in one. Phillies have the right guy up in this spot. Galvis has tormented the brave staff. 24 hits, 57 at bats this year against Braves pitching. Yeah, he came in with a 436 mark against them this year. I believe that Freddie Galvis won't be 26 until this November. Seems like he's been around forever. First big league action with the Phillies came in 2012. Yeah, that's because he made such a noticeable uh, mark on this ball club when Utley was hurt. He played second base and he was making great plays at second base and made everybody, at least defensively, go. Hmm. Maybe we need to start thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. Down the stairs, two balls, two strikes. Last year would have made the opening day roster for the Phillies, but for an infection. He had the MRSA right. virus, which was a very that. serious thing. And was activated in early April. It was two for 42. Including an 0 for 24 stretch at the plate. They sent it back out to AAA on May the 9th. And batted just 176 in 43 games. He is a much different player this year. Round ball right side. Castro flagged it down and flips to first in time. Bogusevic to third. Galvis is 0 for 3. And Aaron Altair is the hitter with a runner at third base. Good play by Castro again. 
because Freddie Freeman had made a move to go get that ball had to stop race back to the bag and when you're the second baseman. You've got to start throwing that ball before the first baseman ever turns around. You don't have time for him to wait and get set. Side corner, even count. He's been effective tonight with his fastball, with that two seamer running in on right handers so that he can use his breaking ball away. He got Rupp to chase a bad breaking ball last inning. Again to second, tricky spin. Castro's got it. And Perez is out of fifth inning trouble. He has the lead. 2 1 is your score. Our rule five pick who's coming back from Tommy John 2013 led all of the minor leagues in strikeouts with 175. Freddie Gonzalez says he will be ready to go Monday as you can see doing a nice job there coming back and Manny Banuelos unfortunately had to have surgery but here's the good news he did not need a second Tommy John a bone spur that was very successful Dr. Andrews removing that from his left elbow the other day things looking up for next year guys got some good young pitching on the way and they're getting healthy Paul that's the key can't wait to see those guys in spring training all ready to go let's not forget Mike Miner that's another name that we haven't talked about hardly at all this year Mike's going to be coming back from his shoulder issues right. I would assume that he's going to be if not already throwing a baseball soon. As Hector Oliveira leads off and nearly got hit by that pitch. One ball, one strike. Hector, we've talked about the way he wraps his bat, where the barrel in starts falling forward toward the pitcher. That's a long way to go. But one of the things he was doing with that was that he was turning his upper body. And then wrapping it where he's almost pointing at the second baseman. So now he had to open up that front side and get the barrel through there. And they've got him to stop twisting his body. Fly ball toward left center. And on the warning track, Herrera makes the catch for our number one. So it's in theory, it shortened his swing a little bit. Still a little bit of a turn of that shoulder. You know when he gets that wrap, that's how Julio Franco started his swing. Yes, right. But he's, as you said, has the twist and yeah. So, but Julio, after he started there, he started coming back to a more traditional spot to fire from. 
Christian Bethancourt has a double tonight. And hits with the bases empty and one out. By the way, there's a great story on ESPN the magazine about Julio Franco. He's still playing, believe it or not. 57 years old in Japan. He's a player manager. Has a mile high pop down the left field line. Galvis goes out. Altair runs out of room. And it's 0 2. Michael Mooney is the author of the Julio Franco feature. He plays for the Ishikawa Million Stars. Million Stars. Right. Like it. Last played the big leagues in 2007 at the age of 49. He's 57 years old. And according to the author, Julio Franco is swinging a 35 ounce bat when he plays. <laughs> I don't doubt it. So. Nice article. Check it out. Little roller that is foul. And Beth and Cordell head back to the plate still 0 and 2. Subway series is working tonight. Mets and Yankees. Mets 2. Yankees 1. That game in the top of the seventh inning. Tanaka versus Mets. At City Field. What Tanaka has been pitching well they've got a. Be careful how many innings he throws just as we saw here in Atlanta, but he's been giving him five or six strong innings. Tanaka's pitching with that partially torn elbow ligament, and they've tried to keep him on five full days of rest. Tonight he's pitching on four days rest for just the fifth time. And trailing courtesy of two solo home runs from the Mets, Daniel Murphy and Lucas Duda took him deep. A fly foul out of play, still one and two. Miami and the Nationals are tied two apiece. Fernandez versus Scherzer. Shocked, frankly, their four runs scored with those two fireballers yeah. working tonight. Court is called out of the plate on a check swing. He wants the appeal at first. Chad Fairchild's not going to oblige him. And Christian's out number two. <laughs> and Fairchild with a flip of the wrist to Williams Perez saying, You're up, son. I think he would have, even with an appeal, I think he probably would have been rung up. He's got a good point, though. Why can't hitters ask for an appeal? I loved when Andrew Jones was up here and you pointed that out. Andrew was the king of that, right? Yeah. Andrew would point for help before the catcher did. <laughs> One, two. Andrew looked terrific when he was up in the booth. He said he's going to give it another shot. He has not retired. He's going to try to get in shape and get an invitation to spring training with somebody next year. Galvis at short. He's got it. And that will take care of Perez and the Braves. We move to the sixth inning. Atlanta leads the Phils 2 1.
Braves Baseball is brought to you by The Home Depot. Let's do this. And Georgia Power. Top six, 2-1. Atlanta has the lead on a beautiful Friday night here at Turner Field. Two young teams getting after it. Game one of the series. And both the Braves and Phils hope that youth will be served, as you see in our Home Depot tools from the dugout. Quite a, a huge proportion of the Braves roster is under the age of 30. Six guys 31 and older. But that was all part of the plan is get younger. Make deals for prospects that are also not on the active roster right now, but are still kids by comparison. And give the Braves a chance to really improve next year and beyond. Adubal Herrera will lead off. He's got two hits tonight. Phillies have left four men on base so far in the game. Williams delivers a strike. Keep an eye on his pitch count this evening. He's knocking at the door of 100. He could use an easy frame. Line into the seats. He chased a high fastball and Perez got him to swing and miss. That's six strikeouts for Williams tonight. Target was up there from Bethancourt. Williams has had good command tonight. Put him away quickly. Exactly the kind of start the Braves hope to see from him tonight. He had this kind of start against the Phillies on the seventh. He went seven innings, no walks, seven strikeouts. His career high in strikeouts is seven, so he's one away from that. Darren Ruff, the batter, he's gotten him twice. Let's see if he can get him with a hat trick. One ball, one strike. Yeah, that would be nice. This guy scares me. Just as he did pregame when Matt Diaz said, you know, keep an eye on him because he's had some good swings. And there was one. And Ruff singles to left and represents the tying run. No damage from a single, though. Breaking ball, and he stayed on it. Didn't flinch. Got it. Now let's see if Williams can get a sinker to be hit right at somebody, get a double play. Runner goes. Bouncing ball left side. There'll be one play. It's to first. McCann aggressive on the base pass stays out of the twin killing Perez got the ground ball the runner at second now two out and this is the guy that scares me at some point you figure as she's bad luck against the Braves is going to turn you hope it doesn't here with the tying run and scoring position hard to believe he's five for 48 against Atlanta this season and this is not a one off bad year as she has never had luck against Atlanta pitching. This is 42nd lifetime game against the Braves. Cody Ashy, 16 hits and 134 at bats. He'd like to erase that and start over. Bethan Court fires it back to second. Yeah, 
Handleton tried to put that knee down. But couldn't because he didn't have the baseball yet and he was you know concerned that the ball might not be on target. He might have been able to block him. If he had, had the ball a little quicker and maybe that's what he's frustrated about. I think it was the Phillies against which Handleton had that great play at second base when Dominic Brown took his hand off the base and Handleton just kept the ball on his back. Right. Stolen out up in Philadelphia. And on four pitches, Ashy walks, and now Cameron Rupp is coming up. And Freddy Gonzalez is coming out of the dugout. And Perez's night is done after 104 pitches. So six strikeouts, one walk for Williams Perez. The lone run came on a Cameron Rupp homer. Freddie's not going to let him face the Phillies catcher in this spot. He'll depart with two on, two out, and to a very nice round of applause. Two on your score. Back to Atlanta in a moment. Two on two out for the Phillies as they continue to hit in the top of the sixth inning. Fans, should there be a rule change to reduce collisions on takeout slides at second base? That is tonight's Toyota Tweet of the Week question. Tweet us at Fox Sports South using hashtag second base slide, and your answer could be read during Braves Live post game show. It's been a topic of conversation after the Cubs Pirates issues in Pittsburgh yesterday. Yeah, another knee jerk reaction to just what happened at the plate when Buster Posey got hurt, and all of a sudden nobody could touch the catchers on plays at home plate. Before you know it, this will turn into the NFL where nobody can touch the quarterback. As Brandon Kniff relieves Williams Perez. Kniff's allowed just three of his 23 inherited runners to score, and he's been tough against righties all year. That's why Freddy Gonzalez calls on him first tonight. And that missed ball one. And he's able to do that, in my opinion, Chip, because he comes in throwing strikes. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. He's got a couple of good pitches to go to. He throws hard. Good breaking ball there. And agree with me if if you do agree. I, I think the last couple of games against Toronto, the Braves bullpen did an excellent job. Oh yeah, much better than mm -hmm. we had seen in the early days of this month. Well, first game, they were the difference in that three to two win when they threw those three plus innings of shutout ball. So we got some work ahead tonight, trying to protect a one-run advantage. 
Ogasevic is on deck. Action continues in the Braves bullpen. Andrew McKeary hands the lefty up. And now a two on pitch for Rupp. Pickoff play at second, and Kniff throws it to center field. But Ruff couldn't get his feet underneath, and no damage done. Good hustle by Maven, too, to get there just in case he got up and tried to run. Didn't get turned all the way. He was still facing toward first base, trying to throw across his body. Caught a break. First batter face stat for the Braves relief core around 64% this year. Kniff is 20 out of 34. And he's way behind in the count here. Three balls and a strike. At the knees inside corner. Rupp was on his way to first. So Ruff and Ashy will be off with the pitch. Ball four, they're loaded. So I jinxed him. And that was the man assigned Brandon Kniff. He could not retire Cameron Rupp. The bases are loaded. Bogusevic is going to be the hitter, at least for the moment. Freddy Gonzalez will go get Andrew McCarahan. Remember, Jeff Francoeur is lurking on the Phillies bench. Would Pete McCannon use him here with two outs? We'll find out in a moment. returns with the subway series as the wild card leading Yankees take on the East leading Mets then the AL Central division leading Royals square off against the Tigers in a game you can only see on FS1 coverage starts at 1230 Eastern on Fox and 7 Eastern on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go game on the bases for the Phillies they've loaded them up with two outs and Andrew McCurahan will be the new Atlanta pitcher and he has a very difficult assignment ahead to preserve this one run lead. Yeah, he's going to face the guy who's number one in the major leagues in pinch hitting average and slugging percentage, tied for first in RBIs and third in hits. That's Jeff Francoeur. 11 for 25 with a homer and 11 RBIs as a pinch hitter. Hitting 239, though, against lefties on the year. First pitch popped up. But headed for the stands and out of play a strike. And like a lot of former Braves this year, he's had 
good numbers against Atlanta pitching. 10 for 24. Jeff's made 65 starts this year for the Phillies. Currently riding an 0 for 10 hitless streak. Didn't get it 0 and 2. Jeff has 47 career homers in this ballpark too. And a big game here May 4th four hits. For the Fightins. He's in a deep two strike hole big spot for McKeerahan. Base is loaded two out. Like he wanted a fastball up. Let's see if that's the target. He did and got away with one that wasn't where it was supposed to be. That was belt high. Ooh. Right on that 95 mile an hour pitch, fouled back, still 0 2. Can't get it up there. They're trying. Bethancourt looked away like, oh, lived to tell about it. Phillies were the first team to really exploit Jeff upstairs when he was still with the Braves. They would get him to go up the ladder. Jeff's really enjoyed his time in Philadelphia. He told us when we were up north a couple of weeks ago. Loves it there. Would, wouldn't mind staying. Yeah, hopes that they want him back. I can't imagine they wouldn't with the numbers he's put up off the bench. Swing and a miss. Off speed pitch retires for Ancourt. McKeerahan struck out the best pinch hitter in Major League Baseball this year in a tough spot. And the Phillies strand three in the sixth. William Perez and the Braves enjoy a 2 1 lead at home.
the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or for your tablet. We'll be headed out to Hartsfield International Airport after our game against the Phillies on Sunday, a trip to New York and then Miami, our final road trip of the year. And our friends at Delta Airlines will get us there safely, soundly. Can't wait to see Matt Coney and the fine ladies who take such great care of us on the flights. Oh, and uh, the, the Delta uh, customer of the month is here this at this game. Oh, really? Yes. Larry Anderson over in the uh, oh, that's right. radio broadcast booth. He has been named the Delta Customer of the Month. He buys tickets and doesn't even use them. He just loves Delta. Really? Yeah. Ground ball by Nick Marquez is out to second. And one pitch retires him as we start the home half of inning number six. Not only that, I mean, Larry didn't fly down with the team yesterday, but he bought a ticket to fly himself down yesterday but apparently thought that he was going to fly down today. So uh, when Delta alerted him that, you know, need to check in, he not only checked in, he upgraded to first class. Well, I mean, he's a big customer. Oh, and, he's, and he's that kind of guy. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's not going to fly coach. He's a serious Delta customer. So he upgraded his ticket to first class and decided, you know what? I think I'll go tomorrow. So he bought another ticket. So that's the kind of customer Delta really likes. They appreciate his business. And again, Delta, customer of the month, Larry Anderson of the Philadelphia Phillies. Two quick strikes for Daniel Castro. And that went a little high. It's one and two. Bouncing ball toward Ashy at third. Got the good hop and made a good throw. Morgan's pitched a good ball game. He's only given up five hits. Graves have made that one opportunity in the fourth inning really count when they got the one out double from Freeman and got the clutch hitting from Maben to put the go ahead run on. On the board, I should say. This might be his final inning. He's due first when the Phillies come up in the seventh. We'll see. Look how economically he has pitched. Well, he's been around the plate. His fastball, I think, has topped out at about 91, but he's used that. He's used that to set everything else up. Pitching a lot like he did against the Braves July 3rd. Five hits, two runs over seven innings. Gave up four runs in five innings on August 2nd. And he's on the tough end of a 2 1 game tonight. Phillies have left seven men on base so far, including the bases loaded just a moment ago. McClure, the pitching coach, on the horn to the bullpen. Line drive into center field. Freeman spoils the shift. Nice piece of hitting for the Braves' first baseman, who's got two hits tonight. He did something different on his delivery there that I think really gave Freddie a good look at this. He kind of he stood up straighter, shortened his stride a little bit, and when he did. Freddie saw that ball out of his hand beautifully. No trouble at all. There was no drive and follow through like he's been doing all night. And as a result, left that pitch up. Michael Bourne has his second at bat tonight. And drives this one toward left. Altair glides back and makes the play, and that retires the side. So the Phillies have a decision to make. Will Morgan continue on? We'll find out after a break.
as evenly as you can possibly play it. Yeah, there's not much of an edge anywhere, is there? And even the home runs are in favor of the Braves. When you think about the dearth, did I say dearth? Of home runs for the Braves this year, for them to be leading the Phillies of all people. Must be the belt buckle. Must be. By Come the way, on. my partner is decked out tonight. He has got his slump busting baseball broadcast outfit on tonight. I cowboyed up tonight. You did? Yeah, I'm looking sharp. I was kind of into this one tonight. I let everybody know it too, down by the batting cage. Tired of this nonsense. Chase Darno, Travis's brother, bounces one to short. Simmons bare hand play. Oh, got him on a short hop. Goodness. Incredible play. Oh, my goodness. It must be something that runs in the Darno family. Yeah. I don't know how Freddie Freeman caught this ball. I mean, this is a spectacular play by Andrelton, but he threw a 95 mile an hour heater. Straight into the ground at Freddie. Safer out. Safe. And the Phillies are going to review that play. <laughs> look at look at Chase Darno. He is looking at it. Anderson Simmons. He knows what Anderson has done to his brother, the Mets catcher. The three incredible show stopping plays that Simmons has turned in in his career. But I think this one's going to be overturned. It's going to be an infield hit. But to make that play as close as you did is just remarkable <laughs> athleticism. As soon as that ball started angling toward the grass, I'll bet Freddie Freeman was like into in his own head going, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Even as good as Freddie is over there, it was like, oh, mercy. <laughs> what a play. So it is an infield hit. More action in the Atlanta bullpen. And Chase Darno is man at first. Peter Moylan begins to warm in the Braves bullpen. Here's Galvis. He'll turn around, hit right handed. He's 0 for 3 as a left handed batter tonight. They've been aggressive with their hitting and running. He's going to bunt. Try to get that tying run into scoring position again. Phillies left the bases loaded last inning. That's upstairs. Keep an eye on Darno. This year he played 120 games with the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. He stole 28 bases in 36 tries. Was second in the International League and runs scored. That 28 stolen base total good for fifth in that league. And second in runs scored. That's pretty good too. Good pitch. He's got his second career pinch hit tonight. And he represents the tying run. 2 1 Braves were in the seventh. Swinging, little dribbler toward Oliveira. He'll have one play and he makes it. Run the second one out. Okay, we didn't get the butt down. He got a swinging butt down and it worked just fine. So Altair is the hitter now. He's 0 for 3. Braves have Moylan ready, but instead it's Roger McDowell out of the dugout.
Mets have opened up a 5 1 lead over the Yankees now. That game's in the eighth inning. Juan Uribe has hit a two run homer for the Mets tonight. Way to go, Juan. And Kelly Johnson, great additions. Marlins and Nationals, 3 3, bottom of the eighth inning at Nationals Park. That's a huge game for Washington. I yeah. mean, with time running out. Yep. I know they've got, don't they have three more games left with the Mets? They do. So they've got to be somewhere within striking distance. If they lose a game tonight and it goes to nine back with 14 to play, awfully tough. Yeah. Not impossible, but awfully tough. Meeting over, all tears up and takes a strike. And Washington just took the lead, 4 3. So they're trying to snap Miami out of it. The Marlins have been playing great. We'll see them on the road trip coming up. No balls and a strike. And fouled off Bethancourt to the screen. It's 0 2. Toronto went home and won again. They blasted the Bo Sox 6 to 1. Blue Jays could pick up another game in the AL East if the Yankees lose tonight. Yankees have a comfortable lead as the number one wild card, do they not? The Yankees yeah. wild card lead is five. Yep, five games over Houston right now. They're trying to hold off Minnesota and the Angels. Well, Houston's got to be thrilled to be home after a dreadful road trip. Saw them lose eight out of ten games. Swept by the Rangers. They start play tonight. Two and a half out of first. And they're winning tonight. 3 2 over Oakland. Pitch. Rolled foul. And two teams that conceivably could knock each other out of any wild card contention in the American League are playing each other. LA Angels at Minnesota, but they got postponed tonight. I'm guessing they got to play a doubleheader tomorrow. Yeah, the Angels. Are in a stretch of 10 of 13 out of 13 games against Minnesota and Houston. They go to Houston next after their visit to Minneapolis. And it's quite a road, quite a road trip. Seattle, Minnesota, Houston. Yeah, go get them. One ball, two strikes to Altair. That's a little low. Good Eight. pitch, though. Now the Angels staying in that race. Uh, They're 12 under 500 since late July. They are a game behind Minnesota. And two and a half behind Houston. So they've got a shot too. They gotta to find some offense. Two balls, two strikes. Two one Atlanta. Pitch almost hit it. Herrera's waiting on deck. Left handed hitter on deck. McCarahan's had some trouble with lefties. Mark Sperry's ready too. He has not. He's been very tough on lefties. So, a pitch here, big pitch in this ball game. And it was not close. It's off Bethancourt's glove. Runner to third. High throw. Oliveira, almost, almost stepped on the hand of Chase Darno. So first and third, one out. As Altair earns a one-out walk. And that was a big miss there by Bethancourt. We'll wait to see how they score it. Coming down. Yeah, that was close. Close to getting spiked. That's ruled a pass ball. Now ball in the dirt could be disastrous for the tying runs 90 feet away. And it was ruled a pass ball as it should have been. That's Bethancourt seventh. A bunt. Runners coming home. McCure and glove flip and an easy play. Christian hangs on. Darno is out. Throw to third. Runner safe. Altair all the way around to third. And Bethancourt is down in a heap. In front of the plate.
I don't think Christian was able to really get himself in a defensive posture because this ball when it was flipped kind of went up in the air and was slow. And he got his knee knocked out away from him. He's out. He, he was tagged out before he got to the plate. Pete McCannon's out to talk to Chad Fairchild. They may want to discuss if he blocked the plate. You have to give the base runner a lane to the plate. McCannon believes that Bethancourt perhaps did not do so. You know what, though, Chip? Not on an infield play. Unless they... Not on an infield play. On an infield play like that, you can block the plate. It's only on the outfield. Christian up on his feet. That's a good sign, being able to get in his catcher's crouch. But the Phillies are going to appeal something. I don't know if it's the play or the block. Well, they're going to... They're going to... They're going to start with the block because you get two calls yes. for the price of one. So... If you challenge the play at the plate on the block, you get the block call or the tag call. And I don't think there's any question Bethancourt applied the tag before any part of the body touched the plate. Yeah, he went right up his leg and then into his body before his foot got to the plate. So then the decision for the umpires is did Bethancourt illegally block the plate? We'll wait and see. Nice also by McKeerahan to get it to him. That's not an easy thing to do because the ball sometimes gets hung up in the web of your glove as you're trying to flip it. So the Phillies challenge the collision rule and he's out of the plate. So Herrero reaches first on the fielder's choice. Altair went all the way around to third on the play at the plate. And H.A. <laughs> H.A.'s getting ready just in case. <laughs> and Freddie Gonzalez is going to go to the bullpen and bring on Peter Moylan for Darren Ruff. Nice play by McKeerahan to erase the would-be tying run at the plate. He departs with two on and two out here in the top of the seventh. Hopefully it'll be a victory for a birthday gift for that young fan. Did you miss your favorite Braves promotion light or giveaway item? Here's your chance to get it with the Braves Country Grab Bag October 2nd against the Cardinals along with your game ticket. You get to choose one of over 25 Braves promotional items to take home as a souvenir. Go to Braves.com slash grab bag for more information and to purchase your tickets. Those three have had a great time tonight. They have been dancing and singing 
since the first pitch. Well, like you, that girl's a big ACDC fan. She's playing her air guitar. Did you see that? Good point. Right? Yeah. Right. What was the song you mentioned yesterday with uh, uh, Down, Down, go, Down? Yeah, Go Down. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, your favorite song. So they were playing TNT a second ago for Peter, for Moylan. Peter Moylan, who's from Australia, like ACDC. Ground ball here would be nice. Darren Ruff, the batter, he is. Got a hit last time up. He's also struck out twice. And a line drive foul out of play. Steer right one. Getting caught up in that last play with the glove work of McKeerahan and the nice play by Christian to hang on. Kind of forgot about what Herrera did. Back to the mound. Boylan gets out of the inning. Talk about that more later. Nice going, Peter. Seventh inning stretch. McKeerahan and Boylan protect a one run Atlanta lead. Go ahead, hit our Toyota key play of the game. This can followed a right Freddie Freeman double. Freddie went to third on a fly ball, hustled on a tag up play, and then Cameron came through again. Like you said earlier, good to have him back in the lineup. And he'll face a new Phillies pitcher, Dalier Hinojosa, who's on for the seventh inning. Say that again. Dalier Hinojosa. Way to go. That was nice. Just kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? For you. <laughs> Tenth game for Hinojosa. It's kind of like saying it that way. Okay. You go, Chip. Maybe to lead it off here in the home seventh. Simmons and Olivera are set to follow. Nice crowd tonight. They've been in it. Good ball game. Two young pitchers started this one. We talked a lot about the youth on these two clubs, the young starting pitching. Williams Perez, a run, six hits over five and two thirds innings. Adam Morgan, the Marietta kid, two runs, seven hits and six frames. And he's on the short end of the decision to this point. Let's get some insurance. Hit 90s for Hinojosa. Change up in the slider.
Bouncing ball toward third. Ashy's got a high hopper and gets his man one out. Phillies bullpen's done a respectable job this year. They've had to pitch a lot of innings. They're approaching 500 relief innings as a club this year. They have won 21 relief games. Their ERA is under four runs a game as a collective group. Under four? 3.93. That's good. Yep. And they've only given up 49 home runs. And that's an impressive number considering their ballpark. Yes. They've saved 32 games. They've blown only 12 saves as a group. So that's something nice to build around going into next year. That blown save thing, we've talked about it before. Yeah. It, uh, it's real deceiving. If it were that many blown saves by Jonathan Papelbon before he was traded, then that's significant. But I think they need, I really feel like they need to change that rule. It's not a blown save in the seventh inning. There's still right. two innings to play. If yeah. you give up the lead, then it's a blown hold. Right. I, I think the blown save ought to be in a game ending situation. Yes. Yes. Instead of, like you said, in the sixth or the seventh inning when you have a lead, throw to first in time, takes care of Anderson Simmons. There's the second out. And one reason why the Phillies feel good about their pen is the emergence of Ken Giles. Uh, very talented, hard throwing relief pitcher who is. The Phillies closer and barring injury will be their closer for a number of years. Yeah, he's, he's outstanding. Really good. Two outs in the seventh for Oliveira. Hector's 0 for 2 tonight. He's down the strike. Hinojos also from Cuba. Isla de Juventud, I believe is how you say it. You are on fire. I think. I don't know if that's right. I'm just happy I got you know also right. Man, one and two. You've been listening to tapes or something. I bet these guys locked horns a time or two. In their days in Cuba. One one pitch. I hopper. And play it second, but an infield hit for Oliveira. That was on the third base side a second. Galvis must have really been over in the hole for Oliveira. Long, long swing. And on off speed stuff, yeah. No chance for Galvis from where he was positioned. Hinojosa was a international free agent signing by the Boston Red Sox. And Got him after the 2013 season. Well, he's claimed him off waivers July 15th. Good to see Christian able to stay in the game after the collision at the plate. And he's going to ground toward Galvis, who flips to second in time, and Hino Hosa. An impressive seventh inning. We'll go to the eighth. Two on Braves leading.
is two to one. And we've had a well pitched game tonight, courtesy of Williams Perez, our SunTrust save of the game honors. And good stuff tonight. He had a good fastball, first ball. Everything was working off that, but a good breaking ball. He had an excellent changeup. The only real mistakes that led to hits were a couple of changeups that he left upstairs, but great work tonight. The only walk he issued was his, in his last inning of work. We talk about it all the time, and we've talked about it a lot, as you see. Matt Marksbury is in. John Hart said to us three, four weeks ago, if there was a concern for the club that some of the young starters had regressed a bit, I would say the last couple of times through the rotation, some of those young starters have started to progress again. Maybe they hit bottom and started to rebound back in positive direction for the ball club. I would uh, not disagree with that, and especially for where Williams is concerned uh, with those awful outings he was having after the disabled list he worried about whether or not he was healthy mm -hmm. but now he's pitching with the aggressiveness and the confidence that we saw before the injury so that's encouraging now we'll see if Mark Sperry can have a a good frame eighth inning important assignment for him he's been working the eighth a lot doing okay and he's got Andres Blanco Ashy and Rupp coming up Blanco's a switch hitter and a far better hitter right-handed Archibald Argyle looked up the blown saves for the Phillies this year. None in the ninth inning. Really? None. One ball, no strikes. And he made a good point. Shouldn't you only suffer a blown save if you're in a position to get a save? Right. That's a great way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. You have to be the last pitcher in the game to get yeah. a save. You can't right. get a save in the seventh inning. Right. He's yeah. also disavowed any knowledge of anything that went on last night with the trivia question. Really? Yes, he, he's distanced himself. Well, Archibald leads the league in under bus throwing, too. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> that's, a, that's another new stat we're going to invent. UBT. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your metrics. Yeah. Uh, Somebody so. will. Don't worry. <laughs> Three balls and a strike. <laughs> Good fastball. Blanco didn't get it. Full count. Mets are hanging on. 5-1. Ninth inning. Yankees have them loaded with one out. In New York. Miami's tied the Nationals in the ninth. Wonder if Papelbon blew that one. Might have. It was a one-run lead. Nationals have had bullpen trouble a lot this year. Pop fly foul. Back out of play. Oh, that's right over there by the Delta. Customer of the month. Well, you win customer of the month, you are guaranteed to get a foul ball at Turner Field. Foul back and out of play. Last five outings for Marksbury three and a third innings, two hits, no earned runs, no walks, three Ks. And learning on the job up here. He too is taking a step forward. Full count pitch. Strike him out. 94 miles an hour. Blanco wanted to know if it was a strike. I don't think it was. But the result is strike three. He One away. Reared back for a little extra on this one. High heater. Got him. That was also a UBT, as in UB tardy on that particular swing. So the Phillies will go to their bench again. Darnell Sweeney, he came over from the Dodgers in the Utley deal. That's a Good at bats against the Braves up north. And by the way, Papelbon did blow the save in the ninth tonight.
Sweeney just two for his last 23. Was a second baseman in the Dodgers organization, was the Pacific Coast League's starting second baseman in the AAA All Star game. Stole 32 bags. Scored 69 runs, was the only player in pro ball with 30 doubles and 30 steals at the time of the trade. So he's getting an extended August, September look for the Phillies. And he is a switch hitter. Most of his time has been in the outfield, though, when he's yeah. played. Kind of funny, the Phillies did that with Herrera. He's a second baseman. They made him a center fielder. Sweeney, second baseman. They've put him in left. Uh, yeah, I wonder if they'll, he'll get a chance to play a little second base now that Hernandez is hurt. Yeah, Hernandez messed up his thumb. That's a shame. He was having a super year for the Phils. And as you mentioned earlier, another Philly hitter that wore out the Braves. Another deep count for Mark Sperry. Three and two for Sweeney. Make him hit it. He didn't. Fast man aboard with one out. A walk. And now Cameron Rupp. Matt was talking to Jen Hildreth the other day and mentioned that he, was, he felt good about his work against lefties, but he's still trying to work on how he works to right handers and he said I'm working at it trying to get better. And I would assume Joe all the bullpens in the world aren't going to be anything like practical real world experience. No. But as we all know and have said before you just can't walk people late in the game in a one run ball game. Rupp has a homer a strikeout and a walk tonight. And he grounds towards short. Simmons to second for one. Castro, nice move around the bag. He really did some fancy footwork to avoid Sweeney, who was charging hard. He couldn't break it up. Mark Sperry with a nice eighth inning. Got the inning ending double play, and he helps protect a 2 1 lead. Braves snapback hat. Visit Braves.com slash hunt hat to get this one of a kind hat designed by Sam himself, along with the ticket to see the Braves take on the Nats on October 1st before the free post game concert. You know what's cool about that H is it looks like the Atlanta Braves A just separated at the top for an H. That's cool. Nice. 
Couple of changes for the Phillies. Blanco moves from second to third. To answer your question, Sweeney is going to play second base. And A.J. Przinsky is going to pinch hit. Let's see how A.J.'s back is feeling. You saw him do the jumping jacks after that collision with Bethancourt at the plate. I talked to him before the game about it, and he said that it actually kind of started in the bullpen, warming up the pitcher last night that started nagging him a little bit. And it's more over to the right side above his hip. And that's already a much more aggressive swing than we saw in the last two or three at bats of the night for him. Yeah, and he took batting practice today. I think it just got real tight last night where he couldn't couldn't turn. Swing and a miss down and in nasty pitch. Hinojosa has his first strikeout. And we go back to the top of the order. And Nick Marcakis. Not just some straight over the top gas right there. Another hit for Nick. 169 on the air. He scored a first inning run for the Braves. A hit here would give him 51 multi hit games this season. Yeah, if you didn't join us right at the beginning of the ball game, it was a beautiful hit. Flipped it right off the end of the bat out behind third. And came around to score from first on a double by uh, Garcia. Adonis Garcia off the left right center field wall. The National League leader in multi hit games this year is not surprisingly D Gordon. Who also leads the league in hits. Gordon entered tonight's play 16 away from 200. How about he also leads the league in infield hits and oh, bunt hits? Bunt hits, yeah. Strike three inside corner. Marquez is retired. Back to back strikeouts in the eighth inning, and here's Daniel Castro. They look like similar locations, too. No argument from Nick on that call. Down and in target. Down and in pitch. In case you wondered who led the club in multi hit games last year for the Braves, it was Freddie Freeman. He had 48 of them. So Nick Marcakis has already passed that mark, and we've still got a couple of weeks left. And Freddie is on deck. Looking ahead to the ninth inning. As Cameron Rupp looks forward to an ice ice bag after the game. Give me a ball. Oh. Jeff Francoeur will lead off the ninth. And I'm assuming Rodi Viscaino is up. He is. Braves bullpen knock on wood is. Done it again to this point. They've pitched excellent relief. Kniff, McKirahan, Moylan, and Mark Sperry. Ground ball short. Galvis vacuums that up and throws a strike to first. And we are headed to the ninth. Atlanta will try to protect a 2 1 lead at home.
Turner's Field. It's Eagles night on Thursday, October 1st. Join your fellow Georgia Southern Eagles for a fun night at the ballpark, including a pregame meet and greet with Georgia Southern greats and a Braves Georgia Southern hat. Go to Braves.com slash Southern for more information. Those lovely ladies have made zombie night look very good tonight. Sure have. So have the Braves will lead two to one. Our at t Universe trivia question named the last player selected by the Phillies as the number one overall pick in the draft. Number one pick in the draft. Um, wasn't Howard. Wasn't Utley. Utley was a number one pick. I'll go Chase Utley. It wasn't Pat Burrell, was it? Oh, I like that. <sighs> yes. Way to go. Whew. Way to go. Pat Burrell. Pat the bat. We were in Philadelphia when Pat Burrell was uh, placed on the Wall of Honor. I think that's what they call it, right? Or the Wall of Yes, Wall of, uh, Wall of Honor. Wall of, Wall yeah. of Fame, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. For the Phillies. They put a plaque up. Yep. So here we go to the ninth inning. Jeff Francoeur. Then we'll see for the Phils. Looks like Carlos Ruiz has grabbed a bat. He can hit a fastball. We know that. Yes, sir. Just so. keep the first guy off. Jeff came on in a tough spot. Bases were loaded for the Phillies. Left-hander on the mound, and after a lengthy battle, he struck out to end the threat. The Phillies had some chances tonight. They've left nine men on base. Fly ball foul headed for the upper deck. And this guy's always been able to hit a fastball, too. That last one at 98. Good off speed pitch. He wasn't expecting that. I, I can understand why. Breaking ball. Don't want to walk him. Full count. You know, Frank Coor wants to swing the bat. Jeff, if memory serves, does not walk often. 12 walks in 297 at bats. Oh. Bethancourt's taken a lot of punishment tonight. Mm -hmm. Certainly has. Another full count pitch. Triple digits on that delivery, and Fran Coor got a piece of it. Jeff swinging almost as hard as Viscaino's throwing. And he walked him. That's tough to do, as I said. So Fran Coors aboard. Tying run at first, nobody out. And it will be Carlos Ruiz. That's the only glitch tonight. Every reliever has walked at least one guy. So you and I have been doing these games together since 2005, right? What has been the one constant when you see Carlos Ruiz come to the plate? First pitch, fastball hitter, especially high fastballs. So, watch out. Downstairs, one ball, no strikes.
Ruiz has another year on his contract. It's a club option for 2017. Roller foul out of play. He's from Panama. They have three come from behind wins this year when they trail after eight. They are three and eighty three. Just missed. Good try. Can't believe he took that pitch, but as I said, he is a fastball hitter. He's just hoping to get one he can handle and wasn't going to be able to handle that slider. High hopper. Oliveira can't make the play, and all hands are safe. First and second, nobody out. Now you got big problems. Good pitch down and in. He rolled over the top of it just like you'd like him to do. At first, I was afraid it might bounce over Hector's head. But he didn't look that one into the glove. He was already looking towards second. Squeezed it out. And you're right about the problems because Galvis can handle the bat. And he most likely will be bunting and he'll try to push it to third to Oliveira to make him field it. Among the Phillies regulars, Galvis has the most sacrifice bunts this year. He's got six of them. So again, right guy at the right time for the Phillies. We'll see if the Braves can pitch out of this. Ball one. You still have to try to throw a strike. Yeah. And I think five of those have come left handed. So he's been asked to bunt more often left handed. That's correct. Hard to bunt 98 though. Just keep challenging him. There's a strike. Remember when Jeff Bagwell was still playing for the Astros situations like this he'd do what Freddie Freeman is doing. He'd come running in balls bunted even if the ball was headed to the third base line he'd grab it and throw to third. Yes. And Freddie is squaring around real late. Freddie Galvis. And that's part of his problem. So he had a couple of cracks at it, couldn't get it down. Now we'll see if the bunt stays on with two strikes. You saw Ian Desmond bunt on his own in a crucial spot in Washington against the Braves and get the bunt down. Let's see if Galvis takes it upon himself to do it here. Swinging and fouled back. Again, it's, he's a tough guy to butt. When you're firing 98 plus in there, it is really hard, especially if you were squaring around as late as Galvis was and not tracking the ball to the bat. Swing and a miss, breaking ball got him. Huge out. Now a double play could end the game, and you've got the right hand hitting Aaron Altair up. Great job by Viscaino in a situation where it could have really been problematic if he got the bunt down. Big play of the night. An ill timed bunt by Herrera. Why he was doing that with one out in first and third, I don't know. And the Braves able to defensively handle that. Christian was hurt, was able to stay in the game. Dying run at second, go ahead, run at first for Altair, and he takes low. Ball one. And that play by Herrera, if it was a squeeze, that's different. But he's tough to double up. There's only one out. Braves were playing back for a double play up the middle. Ill advised. Strike at 99 on a corner. 
This has been a very, very nice development for the Braves. Arodis Vizcaino in the late innings. Three and one, a 216 ERA, looking for his fifth save. Breaking ball of beauty. Ooh, he's had a good one tonight. Remember earlier tonight, Chad Fairchild rang up. It was a Christian Bethancourt on a check swing that wasn't a whole lot different than this. In fact, oh, that one way out. No question about that one. On another good slider. So Herrero will try for a redeemer uh, after that ill advised bunt play that you described. He's the final hope for the Phillies. He's had a good night. Two hits. Infield's got to knock the ball down. Anything you can dive and knock down and keep from getting to the outfield might keep Francoeur from scoring. He has really mixed his pitches well, and he's had his pitches tonight. Yeah. I don't remember a night where his breaking ball has been as good as this. So nothing to eliminate for the Phillies hitters from Vizcaino at this point. No balls hit a strike. Frank Poor and Ruiz the runners. Swing and a miss. Was that another breaking ball or a changeup? It was at 85 miles an hour. Yeah. I think it was a slider, but I can't say because it went down. That was a beauty. Crowd on its feet. Braves are a strike away from a one run win. 0 2 pitch. Ball got away from Bethancourt. And the ball bounced into the stands. And the runner will go to first on an 0 2 ball in the dirt. And the bases are going to be loaded. It's officially a strikeout, but on the wild pitch, the ball bounces into the stands. Freddie wants to know if the ball was fouled away. It apparently wasn't, and the Phillies are still alive. Right up off, skipped up off the heel of his glove and into the stands. What a shame. This guy, you know. Made some great pitches here to Galvis out there and Herrera. I feel your pain, miss. So now, and this is a great visit by Roger McDowell. The uh -huh. emotional letdown after getting the third strike, the third out on a nasty pitch that just had so much bite. Bethancourt couldn't corral it and it bounced into the stands. Now Vizcaino has to regroup with the tying run 90 feet away. If the ball hits off the backstop, they're still going to get Herrera because he was headed to the dugout looking around. Everybody was screaming for him to run, and it was an afterthought for him to go. Christian would have had time to go retrieve it and throw him out had it not bounced into the seats. So the Braves have given the Phillies two extra outs in this inning. The bases are loaded, and Darren Ruff is the batter. Again, this is a guy that Matt Diaz and I both were concerned about all night, and here he is with a chance to tie it or put him ahead. 
Swing and a miss. Off speed pitches to the last two hitters on the first pitch. It's a slider, but it's got downward tilt. It's not lateral. And he's taken just enough off of it to really throw off the timing. One ball, one strike. No place to put Darren Ruff. The Braves were a strike away. They got the strike, but an unlucky bounce saw the ball end up in the stands and Herrera safely at first. Line drive to second, and the Braves have won it. Is that Bobby Richardson at second base? That ball was hit right on the nose. That's exactly the way the 62 World Series ended with McCovey with the bases loaded, lining one to Richardson to end game seven. And this Kaino and the Braves celebrate a 2 1 victory. How about this stat? Braves are now 26 and 17 this year in one run games. Love it. And a great way to start the weekend against the Phillies. Two ones, your final. We'll recap it for you right after this.